I'm Calvin Dela. I'm Cole Dela. I'm Shayla Dunaway, and this is my husband, Tom Dunaway. Welcome to episode three with LTD Sailing. The crew has finished the basic keelboat course on Dog Smile, and now it's time to move over to the catamaran. They'll be doing the rest of the course on our 2014 Fontaine Peugeot Lapari 41 named Narcosis. Today we'll get familiar with the boat and settle in. If, when we're sailing, even though this is a catamaran, and I know in the brochure, it says we can set our champagne flute down and it's just gonna be fine there. Reality is, the boat moves, right? Take a look around, make sure that we got things uh, safely stored so that they're, they're not gonna cause uh, damage or, or break themselves so they fly around the cabin. We wanna make sure, clean up after ourselves, uh, everybody chip in and try to keep the boat clean. The radio right now is set to uh, channel 16. What is that channel for? The general calling channel. Distress and hailing, right? Hailing. So that's international distress and hailing. Also, looks like we've got a good flare kit in here. Well, we've got some handheld flares and some rockets and some smoke. And then any other fluids? Yeah, so our five checks. So we got the oil. We want to check the belt. So the belt is on the front end, Jerry. You should just feel that uh, tension on the belt. Yep. Not too loose, not too tight. Nope. Okay. That's good. We've got the coolant, so this, this boat has the coolant reservoir right on the top, and we can see that that coolant reservoir, it's uh, pretty much filled up. Then we've got the raw water strainer right there, so you can see inside the lid there, it's got a clear lid on the top. Yep. Let's see, is there any blockage or obstructions in there, anything like seaweed or little creatures? Or... And then the fifth thing that we always want to check is the, the fuel water separator. So we've got this Raycor filter over here, and you can see the clear bowl at the bottom of it. And I can see the fuel is all the same color, so that's what we're looking for. If there was water, it would be below that. Okay. So that, that part of the, of the Raycor is actually the water separator. So it's the fuel primary fuel filter and the water separator. Dinghy engine and fuel. Yeah, plenty. Sailing on a catamaran is a bit different than sailing a small monohull. So first, we'll yeah, take some time to so practice our tacking, jibing, and points of sail in the bigger boat. The crew will be dropping the anchor for the first time and learning how to safely operate the dinghy. Just for fun, we'll even throw in a few line management tricks. Yep, we can start pulling our fenders up and those will go up in the forward locker as well. Nice work, you guys. Catamarans don't heal like when we were sailing on Dog Smile, but what else is different? Two big factors are ballast weight and a fin keel that we can pivot around when we tack. The added weight in the ballast of a monohull helps to keep the boat from flipping over, but it also gives the boat inertia which will help carry its speed through a tack. The catamaran accelerates faster because it weighs less, but without weight you don't have inertia. When a catamaran's sails start to luff, the boat slows down quickly, which can make it tricky to tack. The fin keel on a monohull acts as a pivot point, which the boat rotates around as it tacks. The catamaran we are sailing has longer shoal draft keels, which help the boat to track upwind, but do not provide a good pivot point for the boat when tacking. Where a monohull carves its turn through the wind, 
Most catamarans slide through the tap, slowing the boat even more. Feels good. Yeah, it feels like an so. RV. <laughs> <laughs> just, but I'm not sick anymore. So anybody who's watching this, exactly. if you get seasick, dry the boat. There are a couple of different ways to furl the jib. I see a lot of sailors just point the boat into the wind until the jib luffs and furl. This works great if the wind is light, but in heavier air, this method will cause the jib to flog violently, potentially damaging the sail and endangering the crew. Sailing in the Grenadines, we often have a lot of wind, so we find that easing the mainsail, bearing away and blanketing the jib with the main will allow the jib to be furled in a much more controlled manner. Then, just head up into the wind and drop the mainsail. The stack pack on most modern cruising catamarans makes this easy. There are four things we look for when picking a spot to anchor. Good holding. Around here, a sandy bottom provides great holding and a minimal impact to the marine environment. Protection from waves. The wind is our friend. It keeps the boat cool and the mosquitoes away. Waves, on the other hand, can make an anchorage uncomfortable and sometimes dangerous. Adequate depth. In this part of the world, the tidal range is minimal, but we still have to take it into account, especially around the new or full moon when we get greater tidal variation. We don't want to find ourselves aground if the water is too shallow. We also want to find water that isn't too deep, so we have plenty of scope. Drop 50 feet. Room to swing. We want our boat to be able to swing at anchor without getting too close to our neighbors. We hope that our neighbors extend us the same curse. So we're going to watch that chain jumping. Feel the boat? You can feel that? Yeah. Hook up. So now I just went back. I'm idling in reverse. It feels like we stopped. So I'm going to go back to idling in reverse, because if I don't, it's like a rubber band. If I just went straight to neutral, it's like we just pull the rubber band back and let it go. Oh, okay. shoot forward. Yeah. So just to keep it here, let it settle down. All right. And so then we're falling we're back go. on it then, still right at the moment. Well, we're just, because I let it go, we probably went forward a little bit, and now we're first. Now let's go to neutral. Okay. And we're up and we're going to check these out. Right. Yep, we're set the bridle. Kind of pull the pin, there you go. And then make sure it closed, it closed all the way. Nice and solid. Yes. Yep. Okay, good. So now we can see there, our bridle's out there. The bridle's holding the load. There's a belly in the chain, so our windlass isn't holding the load. That's good. And the boat's just gonna be a lot more stable into the wind. It's gonna hold the boat forward and so we don't skate around and sail on the holes on there. The most important part of the anchoring process, you guys, is the We're Here beer, or beverage of our choice for our friends who don't drink beer. Yeah, it's a good thing, but for a lot of reasons. One is, you know, we want to sit down and we want to look. Are we happy with where the boat's anchored? Are we, too close? Happy with where we're anchored? Are we too close to that guy? You know what I mean? What, what if we swing over close to this guy? It's better if we sit down, relax, have a beverage, and kind of see what our situation is. Make sure the anchor's holding, make sure we're happy with our position uh, before we go running off to dinner and just leave our boat.
what makes a good anchorage? It seems like a good spot, but what, what things do we look for in a good anchorage? Well, there's four things. Out of the waves. Yeah. Out of the waves. We don't want to be getting rocked and roll all night. Um, wind is okay. Wind's our friend to a point. But the waves, so definitely protection from waves. Yeah, so what about like sand, like having a nice sandy good bottom holding. instead of like the nice coral sandy bottom. or... Yeah. Um, good holding. Yeah, good so holding. yeah, whether it's sand or mud or whatever. Um, but yeah, so good holding, definitely. Not too close. Yep. Right? Room yeah. to swing. We, we want to have room to swing. Good. Adequate depth. We don't want it too low. We don't want to, like at low tide, we don't want to hit the bottom. But also we don't want it too deep. So sufficient depth, uh, protection from waves. Good holding, room to swing. Those are kind of the four things we look at. What about, how did we anchor today? We got, how many anchors? One. One anchor, single anchor. And where did we hang it off of? Bow. The bow. So single anchor off the bow. And if we look around at these other boats, I see another single anchor off the bow, another one, another one. That's kind of what everybody around us is doing, right? So we gotta follow suit with what the boats around us do. Cause we're all gonna swing as the wind shifts, the current shifts, we're all gonna move with that. And if somebody comes in and anchors with like a bow and stern anchor or something different, they're not gonna swing the same as everybody else. So we all wanna kind of follow suit. We all wanna swing together as, as the wind changes. How much, how much chain did we let out? I mean, we kinda, it's a little loose uh, guess. 75, 80 feet? Why, so the water's only 10 feet deep. Why, why so much? This is kind of that spring that we were talking about. So it doesn't like jerk the boat. So it has some leeway to be able to, uh, to absorb uh, any absorb, kind of shocks. Yeah, yeah. Shock, yeah. So what is that called? There's a word for that. Kind of that ratio of how much, uh, scope. Yeah. And it, and it's, what is it? It's seven to one, seven to one. Think about seven to one as kind of a worst case scenario. If we've just got nylon road, we better go seven to one. If we've got all chain, that chain kind of increases our scope effectively just by being heavy. It wants to sink, it wants to lay across the bottom. Catamarans, because they have so much freeboard, as the wind comes up, if the boat turns sideways to the wind, it actually starts to sail. That, that freeboard acts as sail area, and the boat will actually start sailing off to one way, and then the other. And you get this kind of like the dog at the end of a chain, just like running and bang, run and this way and bang. Um, the catamaran will do the same thing. So the longer we make that bridle, the less likely it is to do that. What about mooring balls? Has anybody tied into a mooring ball before? We have. Yeah? Oh, uh, you guys have charred a little bit before? Yeah, once. Yeah. We're gonna learn some different ways to do it. We wanna approach it from where? If we're coming- Into the wind. Into the wind, right? If we're coming across the wind, we're just gonna get blown away. If we're coming downwind, it's just gonna keep blowing us by, right? Upwind is the easiest way to kind of control the boat and hold it there. What if we miss the morning ball? Reset and try again. Go around, try again. There's no shame. What I've Keep seen go really bad. Keep an eye on where it is because you don't want to run it over. Yeah. But what I've seen go really bad is where people try to save the mooring ball, you know, hook up when it's just gone too far sideways. So if I, I just got in the dinghy and I want to start the engine, what do I need to do? Check the fuel. Check the fuel. Make sure we got it. Make sure it's connected. Probably prime the bulb, right? There's that little priming bulb on there. That was what I had to do. Um, what's that little clip thing? Kill that's switch. In, a little kill switch. That better be in place. Yeah, that's important. Neutral. In neutral. Good. What else? Anything else? Plugs in the boat. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, make sure the plug's <laughs> in the boat. Oh, I failed on that one earlier. Um, fuel tank vent open. There's a little yes. vent on the top. We just need to open that screw just a little bit. You'll hear it breathe. All right, you guys. Swimming? Swimming with sharks in the dark? Anybody? <laughs> you really had to say that? <laughs> There's no sharks. Transition to the catamaran was easy after everyone had a chance to learn the basics on a small monohull. It's amazing how much of a difference that time on the mono makes.